Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Land Rover Range Rover Evoque Dynamic SE D200. This is the second generation model, the facelift, the L551. And straight away, let me show you the key of the vehicle. It is the same old key. Yeah? They should change the key now. It's become quite old actually. Unlock the car, lock the car. This is to turn on the light and this is to open the boot of the vehicle. And this is for the hazard lights. Yeah, the key is actually chunky, but this car has got minor updates to the exterior. It is a mini Range Rover because the Velar actually debuted this particular design in 2017 and then they came up with the same design on this particular car. It says Evoque D200 Dynamic SE right there with the vehicle number, chassis number. And this fake treatment here is just unnecessary. So they have a lot of these treatments. Yeah, almost, almost, almost like everywhere. And in terms of design, it actually looks quite nice and funky but straight away let's open the engine bay this being the diesel is quite loud right now and i don't know why it is so dirty someone has actually sprayed some salt on this tata salt for sure and the engine bay is also very compact this is the air intake which is very nicely done because it pulls in air from somewhere there so it's a little different how it is done i've never seen an air intake like this i said that in the discovery video as well so the discovery sport and this car are identical even in terms of pricing which is not surprising <laughs> meanwhile you have gas struts insulation there which is not surprising because both are actually the very same car as spam would say now the design is very similar to the pre facelifted model but what has exactly changed firstly the grill the grill has been revised it says land rover right here in fact range rover is always written boldly on the body for all the range rover models there are four of them and this is actually the base one which in spite of being the most affordable range rover doesn't sell in the numbers it should be selling fog lamps are like really low down again this treatment with copper inserts you get six parking sensors at the front this is open so it's an air curtain right there you get a camera here and you get two cameras there for the lane keep assist and for the rain sensor but no it does not get any radar it does not get ADAS it only gets lane keep assist does not get forward collision warning any of that the design actually looks lovely I know I'm saying it again and again and again I think there's certain revisions to the bumper as well the indicator is functioning at the moment otherwise that is obviously the DRL these are new pixel LED headlights matrix lights these are new of course and they have around 67 elements which is thrice as much as before the good thing is Land Rover continues to offer headlight washers here which is very cool but it obviously dirties the whole front end in lieu of just trying to clean the headlights and when you come to the side you realize that this car is actually quite shinto minto yeah this is actually a compact suv land rover calls it a compact suv unlike a slew of fake compact suvs roaming in the market this one is actually a real one because this is obviously four wheel drive quite capable because it's a range rover at the end of the day you know what the length of this car this slightly under 4.4 meters which is very similar to the maruti suzuki grand vitara yeah this is a very compact car the wheelbase is slightly under 2.7 meters so yes shinto minto car right there the wheel size here happens to be i think 19 inches so 235 50 19s they have updated the alloy wheels thankfully because the old evoke had alloy wheels which look like wheel caps these at least look like alloy wheels red colored brake calipers right there which is quite cool and you can see the suspension as well i'll show you a funky thing at the rear meanwhile it actually projects the range rover design from here at night so yeah it has that feature as well there's a camera here this unnecessary treatment there's just too much happening everywhere meanwhile it has this copper treatment on the roof the roof can take 75 kgs. Yeah, you have to have that mount, obviously. And that is for the clear side camera as well. Panoramic roof, moon roof, actually. Door handles pop in and out. So, yes, that is for better aerodynamics, of course. Fuel goes in right here. So, you have to put ad blur. And this is marked in yellow. I don't know why, but you tell me. Meanwhile, right here, if you notice, it actually says Land Rover and Jaguar on the suspension arm. So, rear tire size is also the same. And the design from the rear is very impressive. Little revisions have been done to the lights. Dynamic swipe indicators there. Six parking sensors. Rear fog lights. There's a camera here, which actually has the cleaning function too. There is no rear wiper here. I'm kidding. The rear wiper is hidden just like in all Range Rover cars. You get a rear spoiler with a high mounted stop lamp. There's another camera here for the clear side camera, of course. Says Range Rover there proudly. Evoke written right there. The exhaust is actually hidden right below. So that is the exhaust. I don't know why they keep hiding the exhaust. Yeah, it is what it is. And it has a kick sensor. So if I come behind and kick like this, the boot will open. Not right now because obviously the car is on. Boot space is around 472 litres. If you remove this parcel shelf, it becomes 591 litres. Unlike all other Range Rover models which have a full-size spare wheel, this one does not. Tire size 155, 85, 18. So yes, it's smaller size. That is the jack. I don't know where Rose is. There's some store space here. You have a hook. You have a light placement right there. That is the warning triangle. There's a strap to secure stuff and a 12-volt charging socket. Another light, another hook. That's about it. Yeah, it gets a power tailgate. I press a button and there it is shuts yeah it's quite fast let's get inside because rear seat space is not the forte of this car door pockets are decent sized 
and amazing treatment quality is good but i needed a sun blind here why is it not there i don't understand tweet a placement here and getting in and out is not difficult you can obviously recline the seat 60 40 i think that also reclines so that is 40 20 40 recline this is just to increase the boot carrying capacity do you really need to do it i don't think so isofix child seat mounts space at the rear is okay it's not great under thigh support is poor headroom adequate in spite of the fact that this is a sloping roof line and nobody bothered to remove this so i will do it right away it says airbag here this is very aircraft style so some storage space is here this is scooped out of course no height adjustable seat belts and there is a hook right here as well meanwhile you get rear ac vents in the center you get seat heating i think yeah seat heating is there at the rear no ventilation huh? that's kind of surprising i don't understand why you have a 12 volt charging socket although there are two usb-c charging sockets right ahead so it's okay it doesn't matter at all because at least we have got usb-c charging sockets which is important but because the cabin is narrow a third person is not very comfortable plus there's a hump here although he gets a head and here you get a center armrest with twin cup holders as well so yeah the cabin is decently airy because of this the fabric assist button there opens the sun blind this is very crucial because of the sloping roof line now you really do not have much of a headroom but they have managed to do the sunroof very nicely that you've got good amount of headroom airiness as well i quite like it let's get out before that let me show you the dashboard it looks very minimalistic is it a good thing i'm not too sure honestly let's get to the front before that let me tell you that land rover's sales have gone down with the evoque yeah the evoque used to sell much better with the first generation model but i think now everybody is just buying the evoque rather everyone is uh, the door is auto closing yeah look at that feature so now i want to say that everybody is instead buying the villar because the villar is the new evoque probably both of them look so similar i was telling you about the sloping roof line this guy is all about aesthetics and visuals. It says ranged over here. This does not eliminate, which is quite surprising. But what I really like is at night now, when you unlock the car, it does this nice effect here, sort of glows and all that. So yeah, that's nice. Even the front headlights, the headlights always at the front. They also glow. Amazing quality, but this does not really eliminate much. So this is eliminated, but it's not very well illuminated as such. You press both these buttons and there you can close the outside rear view mirrors as well. Mirror controls here. This is for the child lock function. Door pockets are big enough at the front. Speaker placement, multiple speakers, memory seats. You can save up to three people settings. I've already saved my settings, so I'm going to put it back into place. And there the seat moves. This gets a 14-way adjust. The Discovery Sport gets a 12-way adjust. So two more ways of adjusting the seat right here. These are the controls actually. Otherwise, manually I have to adjust the headrest. So that could have been electric as well. Get a proper dead pedal right there. I don't know what this is. This seems like there was something before they've removed it. This is to open the boot of the vehicle. And you can't open the hood unless and until you open the door. So that's very similar to what I think BMW used to do earlier because newer cars are not having the same. Now, the steering has been changed and the center console has been completely completely revised not really a good thing i'll tell you why first things first let's see the glove box it's decent size but don't remove these papers because you will come to the most cheap ever first aid kit this one is from tata yeah this is the same one in tata cars i don't know why it's there in a land rover this is horrendous i don't even know how they put this in this particular car there's a pen holder here and yeah that's about it let's shut this there's some storage space below here with a usb charging socket as well twin cup holders and earlier it had two screens. There was a 10.25 inch screen here. There was another screen with rotary dials. Everything is gone. Everything is now inside this particular screen. Now this screen happens to be an 11.4 inch PV Pro screen. And Land Rover says that 80% of everything can be done with two taps. I completely disagree because I'll show you a scenario. Just imagine at night you come and park your car, you turn off the air conditioning because at night it's a little bit chilly, obviously. Then in the day, the first thing what you do is reverse your car. So I put the car into reverse, reverse parking camera turns on. Now I want to actually turn on the air conditioning I cannot, I'm just going to burn in the heat because when the rear camera is activated, I simply cannot activate the air conditioning system. So that is a big problem with having everything in the screen and what happens if the screen hangs, you're screwed. That is a 12.3 inch screen, the usual one which you see in a lot of Land Rover models, almost every model actually. And if I press this button, this will actually change the color here. Now this is sort of touch sensitive, not the easiest to use. I can change a lot of things from here. I can change the display layout, there are multiple layouts as well. Two dial, one dial and whatnot. It's something I've shown you so many times now. I've also got bored of it. This is something which Land Rover needs to change now. It has become too predictable and a bit cumbersome to use as well. These are the controls for the cruise control, obviously. It says Range Rover here, the horn. The horn is actually very nice. Yeah, it's nice and loud. 
but you have to manually adjust yeah. manually adjust the steering wheel which is adjustable both for each as well as rake control for the wipers control for the headlights automatic headlights automatic wipers of course gives you a decent amount of information there is no heads up display here which is actually there in the autobiography variant so this is the second to lower variant so there's the S, this one is the SE and after that there's the HSC and then there's the autobiography. So this one is having 19 inch wheels. You can get up to 21 inch wheels, get the clear sight camera, which is amazing. Here you get a mirror and a light that is a microphone. Same is the case here as well. Yeah, overall quality of the cabin is fantastic. Yeah, really very nice. And then which is a light control, just touch it like this and you can activate the lights as well. So that's quite smooth this is to open the sun blind of the moon roof because this glass roof does not open it opens in the autobiography so you get what you pay for apparently seats are really very nice and comfortable amazing seats so when they removed the screen they actually made a storage space here while the charging pad some storage space here usb-c charging socket now let's go through this screen firstly if you notice that is the engine start button ac vents are nice and slim quality is just amazing the cabin quality is phenomenal to say the least wheel info energy impact driving style air quality yeah it has got a pm 2.5 air filter as well let's get out of this menu and they have got side menus here so if i want to get into the air conditioning i can just press this button and there it activates so this is for seat heating and seat ventilation that's easy to operate right however once you get in this menu this is for air conditioning fan control temperature control you can do all this from here it's not the best to use. Physical controls are the best. I don't know why they are not there in this particular car. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wireless. You get a valet mode as well. You get into seat function here to turn on and off seat ventilation and seat heating. So you can just do it like this. Why is it showing seat heating? I need to figure this out. Okay, that's for the rear seat. Rear seat can only be heated. They cannot be ventilated. Yeah, now here, see, heating and ventilation you can do. Let me turn this off. Let me get into the navigation, which is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, look at that react baby react so yeah the screen is not the slickest to use it's a bit slow at times so yeah it could have been a bit faster as well considering everything is reliant on this particular screen now everything you do is in this screen only which is kind of sad if i press this button then i get into this particular menu wherein i can do a lot of things like stop start system auto brake and all i get into all then i get into vehicle then i get into cabin lighting can you see the number of Things I have to press to reach here to change the ambient light colors and there are 10 colors for the ambient lighting and then this is how I can increase or decrease the brightness. Not very impressive this screen in the sense that I have to do so many things to actually reach a particular place where I'm looking to do. Let's get into the camera function. Obviously it gets a 360 degree parking camera. That is the camera. Camera is absolutely phenomenal. The quality is amazing. And obviously you've got a underbody camera as well. So I'll get into the off-road mode. So you've got side cameras and then there is this beautiful camera too which is quite amazing. If I turn the steering wheel, it actually shows the same thing here as well. So I have to drive forward to actually unlock the under view bonnet because it kind of stitches it right there. Audio system is amazing. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's do one thing. Let's start driving right away. All right, we are all set to go. And the funny part is that every time you turn on and off the car, now it shows you this cool display on both the screens. So it has this Land Rover logo coming there. Straight away, we are going to be turning off the air conditioning and I am going to change the drive mode, which means I get into mode here. We get into dynamic, turn off traction control as well. Turn on the clear sight camera, dynamic program selected. You notice this became a little bit red here. I select this info panel and we are actually going to change this to, I don't know what, there's nothing interesting here. It's kind of boring. So they could have offered at least power and talk meters. We just put the maps because we can. What do we do here? Again, not much that I can do. So I'm just going to probably turn on the maps because I can. And we straight away get into drive mode click it again we get into sport mode left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard light off revving the motor rev still oh my god almost 3000 rpm and off we go little bit of wheel spin parcel shell making some sound up shifts at 4200 rpm so yeah it doesn't really shift higher up in the rev range and performance is okay it's decent it's not very sprightly as such it gets the job done but you can hear a lot of the sound coming every time 
you actually go through these expansion joints on the road so this is the d200 which is obviously 200 horsepower it's a 2 liter diesel engine which produces 430 newton meters of torque and goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 8.5 seconds which is decently quick it's not very fast because it is a heavy car at the end of the day but it gets the job done in spite of being chintu mintu in terms of size it's still quite a heavy car which is kind of surprising to me why is it so heavy but anyways this car is having the same powertrain and the same underpinnings as the Discovery Sport. So the same engine, but it is slightly faster than the Discovery Sport because the Discovery Sport is a seven-seater. This is a four-seater or a five-seater, whatever you want to call it. I love the horn on this car. It's so amazing. People, even black Scorpios move out of the way when you honk from the Range Rover Evoque, which is fantastic. Now, this car is available with a petrol engine as well. P200, sorry, P250. P200 is the base petrol engine offered abroad. And abroad also you get the D165. So here we are getting the highest state of tunes, which is amazing. But we get the lower variants, which is kind of sad because there's the S, there's the SE. This is the SE, the dynamic SE. Above this is the HSC and there's the autobiography, which also gets a heads up display. This car does not get it. But in terms of features, Land Rover has actually played with permutations and combinations and offered us actually more features in this car, which is a good thing, which is something I appreciate considering those are the features which are not available globally in this particular trim. They are available in the autobiography, like say a 360 degree parking camera, which actually reminds me we should be putting the 360 degree parking camera. How did I forget? There is the 3D view. We are going to put the front one here and I'm just going to take a U-turn from right here camera is so amazing i love the camera and all of you have been asking land rover to shift the fast tag from the sunroof to here so they have done it right now otherwise it was very weird it was on the sunroof because when you open the sunroof you're like why am i looking at the fast tag i want to look at the stars <laughs> Okay, now the P250, the petrol, is actually the engine of choice. 250 horsepower and it has 365 Newton meters of torque, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.6 seconds. So it is obviously faster, has to be now because petrol engine is lighter, more power, no displacement for power. All the engines are two liter engines, obviously, because that's where Land Rover is stuck now. So Volvo is in that behavior of just offering two liter engines and uh, there was the D180 earlier, so with the facelift, power is increased by 20 horsepower, but that also had same 430 Newton meters of torque. So they're just stuck on the torque numbers. They could have increased the torque of this car as well, but no, the torque is the same as before, 430 Newton meters, but it has now a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which gives a torque assist, but doesn't really offer more power as such. So it doesn't give you instantaneous increase in power. Like usually when hybrids, now mild hybrids either the 48 volt battery, you get 20 horsepower and 200 Newton meter boost. None of that is here. It's more about efficiency, stop start system and torque assist. That's all it does and helps in improving the efficiency of this car slightly, I believe, because the diesel is actually quite frugal. Huh? This will return you around 10 to 12 kilometers per liter. However, the petrol will return only single digit numbers. Now that is also a mild hybrid. The petrol is also a mild hybrid. Everything is mild hybrid. Ground clearance is lower when compared to the Discovery Sport. 212 mm is the ground clearance of this car, which is okay, uh, which is not bad. Uh, I, I wouldn't complain about the ground clearance at all because firstly, it doesn't have air suspension, so you can't alter the ride height, obviously. But then it's more than ample a ground clearance, but this car is obviously not and definitely not meant for spirited driving. It's not really meant for off-roading either. Yeah, That's kind of funny considering this is a Range Rover. Now, it is ample off-road capable and it is quite capable because it has got four-wheel drive system it has got all that doesn't have a low-range transfer case as such it has got a lot of modes earlier the terrain modes were here now they have just gone inside the screen which is a bit cumbersome to be honest now nah, not the easiest to operate so that's something which is a negative there performance well the diesel is a diesel is a diesel and it has a 67 liter fuel tank meanwhile the discovery sport has a 70 liter fuel tank the discovery sport is a bigger car now so obviously it's able to manage that fuel somewhere around <laughs> no, obviously the tank capacity at the rear is bigger there obviously now this is a nine speed zf source stock converter automatic gearbox which is decently quick with shifts it's not very fast it's not very spirited and obviously i can take manual control of the gearbox so there it's showing me s3 s2 and all Will it hold on to a gear? It does hold on to a gear going all the way till almost 5,000 RPM. So that's more like 4,800 RPM. Everything glows there in red, which is quite cool. So again, we are going to go full throttle. Engine is vocal. This is a diesel engine and you can feel it. You can hear the diesel engine. It has a diesel sound. It has a diesel clatter. It has a dieselness as well. You can't use this lever to shift gears. No, that is not possible. The first generation model actually had a rotary dial, which used to come up like that and then you could select the gas here they have just become more conventional in that regard so that charm is going from land rover models including jaguar because they had those funky things happening earlier but now all of that is definitely gone so that's kind of a little bit disappointing let's quickly use the wipers right away 
yeah there's so much spray on offer and the wipers are also fantastic in terms of quality so the engine well let's talk about what land rover should be doing because they have a d165 abroad which is basically 165 horsepower it's again the 2 liter diesel engine but that is front wheel drive and has a 6 speed manual gearbox so that's like the entry level model they should actually get this into india and price it at 39.99 lakhs at showroom and take that toyota fortune or your sales will shut overnight because then the evoke will rule the market now obviously i gave mahindra the idea of launching a thar because the thar is a 4 meter with a rear wheel drive setup and 1.5 liter engine and they did that and two years waiting period is there right now for the thar so i'm less of an automobile journalist and more of an automobile consultant thereby helping brands launch cars which have huge waiting periods so this is an idea land rover you should definitely take price it really aggressively i know the horsepower is less than the harrier and the safari because 165 horsepower is not much but then this car is obviously more compact and people really don't care about power if they can get the range rover badge for a very affordable price is what i honestly feel and i think that's very much possible now the top speed of this car 213 km per hour the petrol will go to 230 km per hour so that is faster and globally now they also have a p300e so earlier they had a 1.5 liter three cylinder petrol engine as well which is like the entry level I think the P150, P160, what P160 actually, yeah. Now that engine I think has been used with a battery. It has a 15 kilowatt hour battery pack, resulting in 300 horsepower and 540 newton meters of torque. That has an electric only range of 66 kilometers, three shy of the magic number. No, no, that's not where we are going right now. But that P300e is a plug-in hybrid. and obviously more efficient obviously because it has the battery it can charge from 0 to 100 percent in just 30 minutes using a dc fast charger however with an ac charger it will take around 2 hours small battery a 15 kilowatt hour battery pack is nothing my phone has a bigger battery i'm just kidding that's exaggeration don't take it to my word in terms of the way this car rides when compared to the discovery sport things are a bit stiffer here so low speed ride is not the best and you definitely feel more that you're being moved around and tossed around a lot but speed obviously improves things i honestly feel speed is a solution to all the problems in the world so the faster you drive the better the ride quality gets however that is not the smartest way of doing a suspension setup because most of us in india drive at lower speed so we need a more compliant ride however globally in european countries and all where this car is mostly targeted and sells also there people will obviously focus on better high speed rather not people the companies will definitely focus on better high speed manners because at the end of the day for them what matters is I mean, they have a lot of highways now, so better highways, better roads. So speeds are a little higher. So their better high-speed ride is the name of the game. Plus, roads are also better. So you really do not care at all about. stiff suspension at lower speeds because you don't feel the stiffness on good roads now on these good roads i don't feel it on expansion joints i do feel it and i feel that they should have given it a more compliant ride but then if you want a compliant ride now just get a discovery sport now why are you looking at the evoke the evoke is all about tight statement and that is where it truly excels so now it's time for the brake test which means last lane hazard lights on and those are not very sure footed brakes and lot of tires screeching lot of tire noises Okay, let's go. As it lights off, there is no wheel spin even with the traction control off, which is quite surprising. I've changed this cluster mode to show you something different right now. Let's keep changing the camera modes as well. What a camera! Amazing. Yeah, the quality of the camera on Land Rover cars is just next level these days. Very nicely done, and especially I love the clear side camera. It's so amazing. It just on freaking believable. Now this engine, na, it's decently fast driving, but doesn't have any top end whatsoever. Past three thousand five hundred RPM, it's dead. It's completely dead. It doesn't pull after that. So that's how the engine is. I mean, a diesel engine is like that only, and it doesn't have a top end punch. If you want a top end punch, get a petrol. But this engine, na, because of the mild hybrid turbo lag, has been well contained, but still, it's not very responsive as such. Doesn't like. instantly put your pants on fire thankfully with paddle shifters you can at least control the gearbox and hold on to a gear and that also feels kind of instant how this uh, these paddles will help you shift a gear which sometimes the gearbox doesn't manage to do because it fumbles and give you an aggressive downshift so that's a bit of a problem now power delivery obviously front bias now because all these crossover type SUVs have front bias power delivery and this car is running the new premium transverse architecture which actually is the modern architecture which can get electrified and that's the reason there's plug in hybrid is mild hybrid and all that which is not possible with the older version obviously now this not having the height of the discovery sport has a water wading capacity i love the way this thing glows completely right when you hit the red line so it uh, does not have the water wading capacity of a discovery sport which has 600 mm of water wading capacity this one has 530 mm not that you really care or going to take the car into water or something of that sort the steering is actually heavy there is body roll and how traction control kicked in and applied brakes so traction control is not completely off right now that's the reason the wheels don't spin yeah 
that is a bit of a problem but steering is decently uh, good in terms of feedback and all not really feel some as such feels a little artificial so not very responsive but it definitely feels more dynamic when compared to the discovery sport in terms of the way it drives the discovery sport feels better in terms of ride quality softer suspension there stiffer suspension here the suspension yeah like i was telling you it's fine but there's still a lot of body roll in spite of the stiffness now this car does have quite a lot of body roll and you can feel that roll so this is not a very enthusiastic car to drive it's decent it gets the job done it's not very dynamic in that regard even though there's a dynamic mode which actually brings me to this particular drive mode section because there's so many modes there are actually modes for off road driving as well there's all terrain progress control there's hill descent control there's dynamic comfort eco auto terrain response and off road modes and these are the off road modes there's so many of them there's the usual grass gravel snow there's mud ruts there's sand comfort mode is slightly better in terms of being comfortable i feel <laughs> but i would always drive in dynamic mode because it gives me the full bananas so with, with uh, whoa, see 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 this is the problem with the screen i am just like losing sight of what i'm doing and plus your concentration gets lost while trying to operate a screen very not thoughtful honestly because the best way to have buttons for traction control for drive modes and for air conditioning is having physical controls and that's what ncap has recently said that if you want uh what did they say actually i forgot but anyways they said that for better safety you need physical controls and that is something which land rover needs to go back to now so that's like a reverse step otherwise cars will not get good safety rating obviously this is five star ncap rating because it's a global model at the end of the day so the range rover evoque is in its second generation the facelifted model the third generation model will have a fully electric version which is due i think in the next couple of years and that particular car will probably have an evolutionary design as well so it started life as the lrx concept way back in 2008 a time when land rover was being sold and tata motors bought it so it was launched it took some time to launch from concept to production it took them almost 3 years so 2011 was when it was launched 2015 they actually came up uh, 2018 actually they came up with a new generation model but the previous generation model had a three door version as well it had a convertible version as well but none of them are there in this new generation model it only comes with the five door because those models flopped so land rover realized there's no point on making things which people don't really want to buy and uh, 2019 18 they got, came up with this uh, new generation model and then the facelift obviously has taken 6 years to come quite a long time for the facelift to come i think they launched it in india in 2019 so yeah it took some time for them to bring it to india because it's compact taking a u turn and all is super duper easy yaar and it's still holding on to gas which is amazing let's quickly change this cluster mode i'm just going to put the full map view because that's a little different but again see you keep fumbling here because it doesn't work as easy or as well as you would expect it to we are actually uh, in the best drive mode so we are just going to turn on the camera i'm going to go to the off road camera view and this one is what we are going to keep i came into reverse because when i come into reverse now you notice the mirror actually tilts down so that's also very cool thing we get into sport mode left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard lights off and of we go yeah slight wheel spin there the weight of this car is 1941 kg which is heavy but doesn't really feel its weight as such which is good which actually brings me to the price of this car before that let me tell you that even though it has these cameras for linkey bus assist and all there is no setting in the menu for linkey bus is the only ada setting or safety setting driver assistance system happens to be drowsiness detection i can't find linkey bus assist and this car doesn't pull the car into a lane so i think that feature is there hardware wise software wise they have not activated it probably there is some government regulation which they need to go and comply and all and they are too lazy to do it that could be a possibility i am just guessing anyways let's get to the price of this car both the petrol and diesel are priced identical however because diesel cars are charged slightly more for being more efficient the diesel is obviously pricier on road at 82.18 lakhs meanwhile the petrol is 80.79 lakhs all the price obviously on road mumbai is what i talk about so rupees 1.39 lakhs you pay more just because the government feels that you should pay slightly more registration charge because you are being more efficient conserving more fuel you should pay us now yeah that's the deal so the price is like identical to the discovery sport something i have been shouting since such a long time right now but the most important part is this car firstly doesn't have any competition whatsoever i think probably the only competition for this car is 
the discovery sport but if you are the guy end of guy who wants to buy a practical car you would buy the discovery sport but you would buy this car if you want to make a style statement and that's the reason the actual competition of this car is a louis vuitton bag i how do you make a style statement either by having a louis vuitton bag which is useless because there are so many second third fourth fifth copies running around not that there is none of the evoke yes the evoke also has a second copy which i'll talk about in a bit but before that let me tell you the glc is rupees 8 lakhs more expensive which makes me believe that if you cannot afford this car if you cannot afford to pay 82 lakhs get a china passport or a visa passport because then if you want to buy a car you need a passport you need to be a citizen then not not they give you citizenship but still go to china and get the landwind x7 here financial advice for you if you want to save money go and get the landwind x7 which is basically a clone of this car yeah that looks very weird how would someone go ahead and copy another car and be able to sleep at night but yes there are chinese car companies which do it and this is just going to get worse with more chinese car companies coming remember that company called xiaomi baomi that company has actually taken the headlights of a mclaren the design of a taycan and made some stupid car called suv7 su7 whatever so things are going to get really pathetic in the going future with a lot of chinese crap coming out in the market but it's not about china but it is about china because china is such a huge market okay brakes are nice and strong but china is such a huge market such a huge market that in china they have a long wheel base version of this car a long wheel base version of a chintu mintu car like the evoke makes no sense at all right you rather get the velour but yes they have a long wheel base version and that has a longer wheel base by 160 mm and that's the reason it's longer also by 160 mm why does china need long wheel base version cars i have no clue at all now let me bring you up to date with where the evoke stands today when the first generation model came it became an instant hit a style statement beautiful looking car compact for driving it in the city and all that spice girl also was one of the brand ambassadors and what not super successful however then land rover effed it up by bringing in the velar and the velar is slightly bigger and the design of the velar and the evoke is very much similar as well obviously people who are not into cars will think that they are both the same car like pam from the office but that said the other problem happened that uh, they removed the usp of the evoke because it no longer had a distinctive design it no longer felt value for me because prices have also increased quite a lot and that's the reason why sales have dropped the evoke is not such a big seller as it used to be back in the day and that's the reason why today the evoke sales are quite less yeah i think at one point it was land rover's top selling model now it is the discovery sport obviously but i think the velar outsells this car quite convincingly so with camera we are going we are going for the underbody view so guys this is my video of the land rover range rover evoke d200 se dynamic l551 oh my god what a long name but a beautiful car this car is just amazing only a few people can realize the value of this car but then at that price you think that probably practicality is something you would opt for and that's the reason the discovery sport seems to be a better overall alternative if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's the like button and if you're on a budget uski behan chal rahi hai aage tata ki safari